recorded live from the heart of the Bakken, it's the Williston Works Podcast. Welcome to the Williston Works Podcast, brought to you by the City of Williston. Williston Works brings you in-depth discussions with the entrepreneurs, small business owners, and investors who are getting it done in Williston, North Dakota. I'm your host, Sean Wanko, Executive Director of the Williston Economic Development Office, and it is my pleasure today to have the President of the Chamber of Commerce, Anna Nelson, with us. Anna, it's great to have you on the show on the podcast today. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here and just thank you so much for inviting me. Well, you know, it's been a, it's been a fun ride so far working with you in the Chamber of Commerce. But, you know, I want to get back. I want to go back to the beginning. How did you end up in Williston, North Dakota? What did you do before coming and being the president of the chamber? Well, how much time you got? (laughs) (laughs) This is always my most complicated question. Um, So I'll try to make this as condensed as possible. Um, But I was born in Oregon and then I moved to Alaska, and then I moved to Rolla, North Dakota, and I was there through high school, so that's where I graduated. Um, And then I went to NDSU, and I got my retail merchandising degree. And so from there, I went into the fashion industry. So I was in LA working downtown, the nitty gritty part of LA, not (laughs) the glamorous part. Um, So I was there for four years, and then I moved to Oklahoma City, and I was a buyer for a store there, and then I came back to North Dakota. So I moved to Bismarck first and I was working for KFYR. So okay. started out as a, as a producer, that turned into a producer anchor job. And then I reconnected um, with my husband. I had known him since seventh grade. <laughs> um, so we go way, way back, um, back in our speech days. Um, and just a little aside, I actually met his speech coach last weekend and she was yeah. like, you're welcome, by the way. <laughs> um, so that was a fun little, little, um, introduction there. But anyway, so then I had reconnected with him and I moved back to Bismarck and, um, just kind of realized that I was probably going to be here to stay. And so he, after he proposed, brought me out to Williston, um, and I was working for a KUMV. So mm-hmm. it's a sister station, a KFYR, but just here in Williston, um, And then those hours were just really tough. Um, And so I saw the position open up for the president of the Wilson Area Chamber of Commerce. And at first I was like, what business do I have like doing this job? But I was like, but I want to try for it. I think it could be really cool. Um, And so I applied and here we are. Um, I had a really good interview with the board. Um, I'm really grateful for our board. They've been really, really supportive through all of all of the transitioning that's been happening at the chamber. So that's that's my shortest long story about how I got here. <laughs> well, it's so neat that you bring up you know what your initial background was because I mean the the when we talk economic development or we talk chamber of commerce, they're they're similar but they're so different in 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 what missions are and and what uh, that each entity is trying to accomplish accomplish. But you know I always say like you know I never grew up saying. I wanted to be an economic developer Uh, and I think these professions you don't choose them you know they choose you and 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 that really is you you talk about that story it's exactly I mean what you're looking for in a president is the right fit and and obviously with you being in there it's just been a it's been a great fit you know so far what you've been doing for the for the city of Williston but you know people out there they hear chamber of commerce all time what are some of the services that you guys offer so one of the main things that I, I like to say is, is we're champion of commerce. We're a champion for businesses. Um, so to me, what that means is we want to be partners with each, with each of these businesses. And, you know, our members range from very tiny sole proprietorships all the way up to big franchises and right. big box stores. And so, yes, we have to tailor it a little bit to each one. But overall, we just we want to be there to support those businesses. We want to be there to help advocate for them if they need something um, that is kind of maybe above and beyond what they think they can do. Or, you know, maybe we have the connections they don't. Um, and maybe we can find resources that it's hard for them to find on their own. And so that's that's really what my goal is, is to to advertise for these businesses, advocate for them, do events for them, give them sponsorship opportunities. Um, 
And I, I don't know if you want to go here yet, but I do have a new initiative that I'm excited about. Yeah. So it was actually brought to me by the Upper Missouri District Health Unit, um, and it is a mental health first aid training. And so the first conversation I had with the instructor, um, I, you know, the, the first question everybody has is, what do you mean mental health first aid? What does that mean? Like, it's not a, a physical right. thing, right? So you have like CPR, you have first aid, you put a Band-Aid on. You can't do that um, when it's a mental health issue. And so what this initiative does or this training does is it gives people those similar, I guess, uh, tools to help people who are in some sort of mental health distress, whether Mm -hmm. that's addiction, whether that's anxiety or depression. Um, So it's just kind of helping people recognize the first signs and symptoms of that mental health distress and then connecting those people with resources. So this is good for everybody, but it's good for employers, employees, teachers, anybody who interacts with people, that's everybody, right? Right. And so it's, it's been really exciting for us to be able to bring this to the community. We've had a lot of interest and um, so far we've done it every other month. So hopefully we can continue that and just really bring something great to the community that you can see the fruits of eventually. Um, One thing that I've said in in a couple of articles and interviews is that we know the difference one person can make when it comes to mental health. What if a whole community knew how to do that? So that's that's the basis of that. Well, and you're right, it's so important. Um, The challenge with mental health, not only in this community, but going across nationwide, and it affects so many different aspects of, of business development that it, it just touches everybody. And so, and, and just like you said, just the little things, if you can address it one small issue at a time, uh, it, it really helps. So, I mean, we, we can, we, you know, we, we congratulate uh, the Chamber of Commerce for stepping in because that's one thing with economic development. We've put in quite a bit of, bit of, of grant money towards addressing mental health. I know the county, Williams County, has put in grant money to help it try to address some of the mental health issues uh, that we're seeing here. As well so again it's just kind of everybody coming together and helping because one thing that does affect and i wanted to get into it and talk to you a little bit about it because you're seeing it with your members we're seeing it again not just locally but this is a nationwide problem the workforce shortage there's not one company that i deal with that hasn't says there's a shortage of workforce how are you helping them on the chamber of commerce side of things we've been trying a couple of different things just starting with um just gathering the data um so we started with a survey so we sent a survey out to all of our members we opened it up to the public just asking what are your workforce barriers just so that we kind of had a starting point for where we could go from there um so since then we have worked with um you guys at economic development um kind of in tandem, I guess, at least we've been at the, the same events, um, working with the North Dakota Department of Commerce on their new Find the Good Life 2.0. Mm-hmm. Um, I think each of us are champions for that. Um, and then that's Roll Call as well that's in that initiative. So just kind of getting people excited about North Dakota and why you should come work here. And then kind of with that, we've held a round table. Um, I've gone to a round table, uh, two of them, uh, one in Watford City and one in Bismarck, just to kind of get um, different perspectives. And then we're also working on, and this is still a work in progress, but I I can't wait to actually see it happen. Um, But again, hopefully kind of working in tandem with um, that roll call and North Dakota Department of Commerce initiative we want to help the trailing families and so kind of the working title if you will is the Mm -hmm. trailing families concierge service and so our hope is when one of our member businesses has a new hire or a potential new hire but they want to bring the whole family here we want to take their family and show them with one of us or one of our ambassadors somebody in the chamber show them where they can go to um like health care child care education, places of worship, shopping, anything that they want to see that Mm -hmm. will make their move easier and kind of give them that, um, kind of like in Find the Good Life, that champion, that one person that they actually have in person that they can ask questions to instead of just 
a broad questionnaire? Well, you know, getting involved is so important, and and talking about that with the trailing spouse or the trailing the, the trailing family uh, that she'd mentioned. I mean, just it, it brought up this memory. This goes back like ten years ago. I'm doing a tour of Williston with a, with a national news media organization, and we're out looking at this area and. and out, you know, there was this trailer and out the door comes this lady in the trailer and, and she just takes over the conversation and says, you know, Williston's the worst place in the world to live and, and da, da, da. And, you know, at first I was a little offended, but then, you know, after I thought, I said, you know, you're probably sitting here all day in the in this in this camper. Uh, you don't have an outreach system while your spouse is working. It probably is the worst place in the world. So you know, adding a program like what you're talking about to help these trailing families get involved and, and find the resources. I mean, they're going to find that Williston's a real welcoming community, and they're going to find that there's a whole lot to do here. And and so that's that is a tremendous that's a tremendous addition of what you guys are doing, with Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, we're kind of along those same lines. And before I moved here, like I lived in North Dakota, but had I been to Williston? No, why would I, right? <laughs> right? Like there's nothing there. And that's what I thought for so, so long. Right. And then um, when I knew that um, my husband, before he was my husband moved here, I was like, what is going on out there? <laughs> and um, that was like right in like 2012, you know, and there was kind of the height of that boom there. And, you know, it was, it was interesting hearing his stories and then moving here right. and just seeing the growth that this community right. has accomplished. Um, and so when I first came out here, I kind of thought the same thing. I was like, why would I move to Wilson? Right. Why would I do that? And I got here and I just like instantly fell in love with the people and with so much to do. That's one thing too, that when, when people come here, they need to know that there are so many ways to get involved. And another thing that builds upon that you guys are talking, let's talk about the relocation guide. Cause that's another great resource that, you know, anybody coming new to Williston or they want to get more information on Williston. That's huge. Yes. So that is a partnership with a lot of different entities. So we have economic development, we have Tri-County, yep. we have Western Region, we have the Tourism Department, we have the County, we have the Chamber. So a lot of us kind of with those common goals of getting people here and showing them the wonders of Williston, right, is, is you have to get them here. You have to get them excited. Right. And so that's an, another piece that hopefully, I say this a lot, but we'll work in tandem um, with that Find the Good Life 2.0, with what we're doing, with what you guys are doing, economic development. So just the, the goal is to work together to bring those people here and show them what Wilson is. Right. And, you know, and for the listeners, you know, referring to the Good Life 2.0, I mean, again, it goes back to the workforce problem is such a challenge statewide, again, nationwide, but it's such a challenge statewide that you see the North Dakota Department of Commerce is even getting involved in this, um, of, of trying to attract more workforce to this area. So they've got this program, Find the Good Life 2.0. You can find all the resources uh, on their website. You know, we've talked about there's going to be champions that are going to help push it. It's, it's a good collaborative effort, and that's a good lead-in, too, because I'll tell you, one thing you get a lot, and I, I'll tell you from the Chamber of Commerce, you probably run into this because you guys are a membership-driven uh, organization. And, and um, you know, comes time to renew your membership, get new members, you might have, you know, businesses out there saying, well, why would I want to renew with the Chamber? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you answer, but I'm going to tell you this, is like the one value that you're going to find with the Chamber is that, when you're renewing your membership, you're, you're joining basically a broader coalition that work towards the best interests of business, uh, business championship uh, for the area. So I, I say it a lot all the time, it, you know, putting your membership dollars, would you rather have like, you know, yourself up there, let's, let's say state legislature, would you have yourself up there just kind of trying to, to promote what, whatever you're trying to work on at the state legislature, or do you want to be a part, you know, part of a broader partnership that has the horsepower behind it that goes up as high as like the greater North Dakota chamber that can help champion and lobby. And I think that's where the biggest value, some people say, I don't see things directly, you know, I don't see something directly tangible. Well, it's there. You just got to look for it. But I mean, the value of just being part of the organization is huge. Yeah, and kind of to some of those points, I have been talking with the Greater North Dakota Chamber on several different things that are happening either within our state or even at the um, national level. Um, and then again, on that note, I have I actually just had a couple of conversations very recently with um, both of our senators' offices about there are a couple of bills that 
could hurt businesses. Right. And I want to make sure that I'm doing what I can to protect them or, you know, if there comes a time to talk in opposition to these bills or something, just I, I want to at every level, whether that's local, regional, statewide, nationwide, I want to protect these businesses. And so, yeah, it's, it may not be like tangible. It may not be like something that they can see right away. But I hope that at least long term, these are serious issues that I want to make sure businesses don't have to deal with. Like, I want to do um, the groundwork and make sure that the economic landscape is good for these businesses. And, you know, another thing I think is great, too, that I really like where the Chamber of Commerce works with economic development is that there, there's there's two things that we share when we're looking at a business startup to business opening. Uh, we've always talked about as economic development, we'll do the groundbreakings. We put the shovels in the ground and throw a little dirt. And then when it gets to opening the doors, I just always enjoy the ribbon cuttings that the Chamber does because, I mean, that means, you know, here we are. This thing is real. It was. It was. A, it was a vision. It was an idea. It was a vision, and now it's a reality. One fine. I want to look into the future a little bit with Yana. You're president, chamber of commerce. What's your vision? Where do you want to take the chamber in the next five years? It's a great question. <laughs> um, I mean, we're we're still pretty early in our um, strategic planning since I just took over not that mm-hmm. long ago. Um, but I guess just one of the the biggest aspects that I want our members to know is kind of what we've touched on here today is that we are always working behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so our four pillars, if you will, are connect, engage, grow, and lead. And so we want to build on those, expand on those. Right. Um, and so we want to make sure that we are connecting businesses. We want to make sure that we are engaging the community. We want to make sure that our businesses and our community is growing. And we want to make sure that we have leaders out there. And um, that's, that's what a lot of our initiatives are now, but we're, we're building on that. And um, I think kind of another pillar that we're throwing in there a little bit is making sure that we are healthy in mind and body because we have our corporate cup which is the body part of it and then now this mental health first aid which is the mental part of it because you you can't run a business you can't be a good employee unless you have that health and so that's that's another aspect that i don't think a lot of people think about when they think about business and they think about employees so that's that's another aspect that we want to bring to it and just advocating for our businesses and being there for them. Um, I, I try to end almost every email that I send out to any of our members with, let us know how we can help you because I truly want to know. I don't, I don't just say that to throw it out there. Like I want them to email me back and say, actually, and when they do, it's like my favorite thing in the world. Cause it's like one more thing that I'm like, yes, I want to help you. I want to be there. Um, and so, yeah, whether that's networking, sponsorships, events, um, we're, we're here and we want to support our businesses. Well, and that's, again, I, I say this all the time as well is that, you know, the successful businesses that you see out there, it wasn't, I have an idea, I open the door and I'm making a million dollars right out of the gate. It takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of time to build the business. That's why it's, it's to, you know, to me, it's so satisfying to see some of these successful businesses. Cause I know the amount of work that has been put behind them and, you know, it, being an advocate for the entrepreneur sector, um, and for business development, it's just, it's so satisfying for me to just, again, I go back, I say, I've seen the amount of work they've done. They're reaping the benefits and the rewards right right now good for them you know and there's some you know also at the chamber though i mean there's some great ways to to be a part and get involved and we talk about your corporate cup which is you know businesses can be a part of that um we have uh you guys uh, do your annual chamber awards banquet uh it's a great opportunity to be a part of that and i think one of the biggest ones well as well is the ambassadors program because i see them at all the ribbon cuttings and i mean they're just people that you can approach um from a business standpoint in the community uh, and they can help advocate and help you out with questions you might have. Yeah, and those ambassadors, we kind of want to be, we want that to be a two-pronged approach. Like they're advocates for us, but we also, like I think you've seen at the ribbon cuttings, um, we introduce them and we right. want people to know who they are, where they come from and give them a little more visibility too, because we want everybody to benefit from yep. what we're doing and we want their involvement to help them. 
Yep. So one final question, Anna, we talk about the city of Williston again. I mean, I, I always talk about the future of Williston. Um, you know, we're, we're going to have ups and downs right now. We're in a tremendous up cycle. Um, and, and always the goal is you move the city forward just a little bit more and, and, and leave it better than it was during the last up cycle and then maintain when things maybe be a little bit down uh, and get ready for the ride next. But, you know, this one right now, it looks like we're going to be in for a long, uh, a pretty prosperous ride here with some of the development that we're seeing. You know, I say there's a lot of value added development happening now. So it's these big companies taking advantage of the oil uh, uh, taking advantage of how to provide value off oil and gas byproduct. A uh, prime example is the natural gas, you know, taking that of what's currently being, uh, some being flared off, but taking that, creating value uh, to it and, and selling it onto into another market. And so we're going to see a big run on, on that as well. But when you look at from a chamber standpoint, looking at the future of Williston, what do you think happens over the next five years? I'm just, first of all, I'm so excited about everything that is coming and happening and that you guys are working on. Um, when I first thought about taking this job, one of the things that made me most excited was what city in America has the chance to build a city center? Right. Like true city center from the ground up. Right. And here we are. We have this tremendous opportunity and I'm just, I'm I'm so excited to see what happens. And then on top of that, kind of like you mentioned, is that industrial park and we have so much growth and so much uh, innovation happening out there. And so I, I keep telling people like, I see another boom and they're like, oh really, another oil boom? <laughs> I'm like, well, I, yeah, I guess I can't rule that out, but that's not what I mean. Like just right. an, an economic boom, a population boom. Like we're, we're going to need the people to build what we're working on, to staff what we're working on. And then some, because right. we're, we're not just building that city center. We're not just building that industrial park. We're working all working on all the infrastructure around it. So that's the housing and the roads and everything else. So there's so much opportunity here and in five years and 10 years and beyond. I mean, there's, there's so much happening here. And I, I, I know that a lot of people are like, Oh, there's not much to do there. And there's not much right. shopping, but like, have you been here? Like come here and see what we have come right. here and see what's coming. Like, it's just, it's, it's exciting. And I, I am excited to see what you do. And then kind of like you were saying, like you kind of see the fruits of it. Like it feels like almost a relay, like you're handing the baton right. after you help develop and then we get to kind of take them from there. Um, so I'm, I guess it, that doesn't really totally answer your question of what I see, but I'm just, I'm excited for all of the growth that we have coming. Well, I think opportunity and, you know, what you're, you know, referring to city center, what we're talking about is the Williston Square. And, and what that is, we opened up a brand new airport in 2019. And, and what that did, our old airport, it vacated about 800 acres of pretty prime real estate opportunity. Uh, what, what the vision of our city leadership is that it's really going to be a showcase piece for, for uh, the community of Williston. I mean, it's just going to have things in there. It's going to make the community tremendously attractive. We've barely gotten started on this thing, and we already have three restaurants. We've got a clothing store. We've got a $100 million regional health care clinic, which is broken ground. Uh, we've converted the old terminal into the regional 911 dispatch center. It just continues. I mean, it's just going. And, and I, I just can't wait to see what this thing uh, does once we're able to kind of get caught up with the infrastructure, the roads, and, and some more of the vision because it's really going to take off and it's going to be a, a neat piece. So, final comments, Anna. We're talking about Chamber of Commerce. People want to get a hold of you. How do they get a hold of Willis and Chamber of Commerce? Well, they can stop by at our office. We are back downtown, um, so we are at 10 Main Street here in Williston. Um, they can also visit our website, williston.chamber.com. They can call us, 701-577-6000, or they can email me directly if they would like, anna at williston.chamber.com, or they can email the chamber as a whole, wchamber at williston.chamber.com. All right. Well, we have Anna Nelson, president of the Williston Chamber of Commerce. It's exciting. I can't wait to see uh, where you're going to take this office. This is a perfect time right now with the development that we're seeing. Thank you so much for being on the Williston Works podcast today. Thank you so much. I was excited to be here and I very much appreciate this time. 
All right, and again, thanks for listening to today's episode of the Williston Works podcast. This is brought to you by the City of Williston. Please like and subscribe for more interviews and content. And to learn more about Williston, North Dakota, visit cityofwilliston.com. I'm Sean Wanko, Executive Director of the Williston Economic Development Office. We're going to see you on the next episode of the Williston Works podcast.